Hello everyone, welcome to a video tutorial for random flow. This is more for beginners and while not being too technical, we'll aim to show you the basic mechanics of how the random operators work. So in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate the random loop extrude operator on a simple building model and how topology plays a part on the randomization result. Let's start with building the base mesh. If you're new to the add-on, I suggest you play around with low poly or simple meshes first to quickly familiarize yourself with all the functionalities without the hassles or complications of dealing with higher resolution objects. Keep the topology simple, quads, and avoid really long edges. Now for random loop extrude, this creates random patterns made up of face islands or sets of faces based on the topology of the active or source mesh and outputs a new object to the scene with that randomization. You can repeat this process by toggling on the numbers on top of the redo panel which goes up to 5. In this video, I'm just going to enable 3 numbers meaning I will have 3 new objects to the scene with different patterns based on the random seed. Once the loop objects are enabled, increase the global subdivision property to increase the number of faces for randomization based on your face selection from the source mesh. More faces means more pattern or face islands, which is also relative to the panel size. The smaller the panel size, the more detail you will have per subdivision level, but can also slow the operation and in some cases, cause Blender to freeze, so be careful. Because the loop objects are stuck together, they can produce overlaps that you can see in the viewport this really doesn't pose any problem as long as the objects share the same material, which will mask the overlap in render. But if you really want to get rid of it, use the individual inset depth or random seed overlap object or the global depth random seed. Remember that the randomization is dependent on the topology of the source mesh. You can use this to your advantage and add edge cuts that will give different spacing or length to the faces to try and affect the result of the randomization. This method is really useful if you're using a lower resolution source mesh as you can control or handle the topology better compared to a higher resolution object. The properties that you really need to play around that much is the global subdivision level to give the randomization more faces to play with. Just be careful with the amount. The panel size of the loop object Smaller means more detail but more overhead, and larger means less detail but faster. The solver, which uses different algorithms to create the random patterns, and the inset depth for the height of the extrusion. These are the properties that I use most of the time, and the others are just exposed to give you more control and variability in the result. If you experience geometric spiking, which usually happens when the face island wraps around a sharp corner containing more than three edges, you can get rid of this effect using cut method split or even offset set to off, but with a little trade-off to having the sharp edges of the panel islands be puffed out. Or you can manually mark sharp these problematic edges and the operator will split them, making those spikes disappear. This is true for random panels as well. I can't stress enough the play around with the settings and random seed until you get what you want. We are dealing with dribbled or randomized detail, but the controls available and how topology plays a major part in the randomization, you can at least have some control over the result. I'm going to speed up the video at this time. We are going to talk about the shading feature in later videos. For now, I'm just telling you about the influence of topology in the process. And even though each of the random operators has a lot of redo properties, you only need to touch a few of them most of the time, which I will show you in this new series of videos. The extra controls are only there for, well, extra controls. It's better that they are there for special use case scenario rather than not. And that is it for this video. If you have any questions, use the comment section below or the links in the description. You can also join our Discord community with the invite link in the readme file inside the docs folder in the add-on directory. Also, visit my Patreon page at patreon.com slash blenderguppy for freebies and you can also support me there as well. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.